Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. UK State Minister gets a first-hand view of the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road reconstruction project. St. Lucia joins the rest of the world in observing World Suicide Prevention Day. And Kamdu specialists hope to present the Creole language policy to the government of St. Lucia by January 2022. Build with resilience in mind, understanding of the impact climate change is having on vulnerable countries like St. Lucia was a sentiment of UK minister and COP26 champion for the UK, Honorable Anne-Marie Trevlan, who visited the island to get a first-hand view of some of the climate adaptation projects in St. Lucia funded by the UK government. Glenn Simon reports. Thank you very much. Indeed. Minister of State for Business, Energy and Clean Growth from the United Kingdom, Anne Marie Trevelyan, visited St. Lucia to witness firsthand some of the adaptation projects funded by the UK government. One of the key projects she visited was the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road Rehabilitation Project. So I'm really looking forward to seeing for myself exactly where this road will go and to understand uh, just how important it's going to be uh, for so many of St Lucia's residents, but also, of course, for tourists as they come to visit your wonderful island. Minister Trevelyan is also the Adaptation and Resilience Champion for COP26, hosted in the UK this year. She noted that vulnerable countries like St Lucia face challenges due to big climatic changes, such as flooding, which washes away roads, she stressed the importance of building new structures with resilience in mind, understanding the impacts of climate change. We are, we are doing the same in the UK. We are building roads that have to be more resilient to our weather shocks. Uh, and uh, that's part of uh, what we want to be doing as we make sure that the uh, funds that we spend to help uh, infrastructure uh, for those countries that need it too is doing exactly the same thing so that St Lucian citizens have uh, the opportunity to, to benefit from solid infrastructure, which means that economic growth can continue uh, and we can see St Lucia go from strength to strength. The minister and her team received an overview of the Millennium Highway project, which outlined areas such as project scope, requirements, funding, risks and project timeline. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ivor Daniel, who accompanied the minister on a tour, said this is a project that all St. Lucians should be excited about due to the road safety, sustainability and resilience considerations featured in the design of the project. This project, the design wasn't, I could say, not the typical design. It's one where we, it, in there was the issue of the climate vulnerability assessment that had to be conducted prior to, to the, and that had to inform the design that the, the consultant had to put together. The consultant also had to take into consideration the outcome of an IRAP study, which is a road safety study. And there are also other issues of gender rela um, related matters that have to be taken on board. We need to have taken on board the matters with the, person, the, the, the project affected persons. We need to ensure that those vendors that will be displaced that there is a new location for them or there is some manner in which that would satisfy them that they can continue to, to survive in, in this country. He said the overall project has been divided into three lots. Lot 1 has been awarded and is due to commence in September 2021. Lots 2 and 3 are being rescoped for rebidding. Nicholas Johnny is the project coordinator for the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road Rehabilitation Project. This represents a major infrastructural project. Um, of existing roads, approximately 40.2 kilometers of road. It commences in Castries at the Bannon Roundabout and it ends in Soufre at the Soufre Bridge though. 6.1 kilometers from Castries to cul -de -Sac. You have 11 kilometers from cul -de -Sac to Ancillary, inclusive of the reconstruction of the Ancillary Bridge, which will see the demolition of the existing bridge behind us and the reconstruction of a new bridge, two-lane bridge, and then you have the, the, the final segment, which will be from Ancillary all the way down to Sufra. Along the tour, we spoke to two individuals from Mario and Ancillary respectively, who will be directly impacted by the project. They expressed their satisfaction with the level of consultation and arrangements made to facilitate them during and post project execution. It will be better for me in the long run because I'm not really safe where I am because I'm on the roadside, so I'm going to move further away from the road. 
Parce que produit qui en faveur moi, en faveur village en Sarawi. En faveur toute machine qui passe en l'air parce que là où elle a pris, en chaque machine qui a une quoi, on marche en l'air pour ça. Pour ça, vous venez changer, mais vous venez sortir tout le monde. The project is estimated at US $54 million, comprising UK CIF funding of 69%, a CDB loan of 15%, and 17% is funded by the government of St. Lucia. When completed, the project will improve the overall road network, improve infrastructural resilience and connectivity, which is projected to foster greater economic activity for St. Lucia. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. World Suicide Prevention Day celebrated annually on the 10th of September is organized by the International Association for Suicide Prevention and endorsed by the World Health Organization, WHO. The event represents a global commitment to focus attention on suicide prevention. This year's theme, Creating Hope Through Action, reflects the need for collective action to address this urgent public health issue. Senusha joins the rest of the world in making a commitment and taking actions to prevent suicide. Mind this report from Funnel Neptune. Mental health advocates, organizations, suicide survivors, and other individuals join together in observing World Suicide Prevention Day on September 10. World Suicide Prevention Day is commemorated with the theme of creating awareness about the ways in which suicide can be prevented. Community mental health nurse Jana Felix Edward highlighted the need to recognize warning signs of suicide and knowing how to respond to the situation. Listen empathetically. Don't be judgmental about their situation. Don't tell them what you think they should do or what you would do in a situation like that. Uh, just be empathetic towards them. It is important to hear them out. Don't leave them alone when they're telling you that they are suicidal, they're thinking about completing suicide, that they're feeling hopeless, that they're feeling helpless, that they're feeling like the world would be a better place without them. Don't leave them alone. Always stay with them, sit with them. Um, you can either ask them to call the 203 helpline or you can call the 203 helpline yourself. Depression survivor George Senkor, better known as Platinum George, spoke about his experience living with depression and finding hope. The depression hits you know when you when you're alone, when you're by yourself. That is when everything starts kicking in. When you're among people, it's just like a cover. Just like I tell people and entertain it, basically like you are. Uh, it's a mask that you put on to go on stage. But apart from that, when you remove that mask, you are you're like everybody else. You have your bills, you have stuff to take care of. For me, the, how I defeated depression, I put myself in church. I believe it is okay to speak to somebody. As a man, it's okay to cry. Okay, it's okay to express yourself. Because what happens, the more you hold this pain inside, you destroy yourself, you destroy your own family. You always have a rage that every time somebody approaches you, instead of you, you take it calm, you, you, you react with emotions, you do not think. Then this, this depression affects your child, affects your job. Nurse Ajana Felix Edward also called for the participation of Sinclusions in the light a candle activity. It's where they would light a candle at 8 p.m. at night mm -hmm. and they would put the candle near a window. We're encouraging them to take videos, take photos and post it on social media in an effort to recognize mm -hmm. Suicide Awareness Month, to remember somebody who has completed suicide and to show support for persons who have survived an attempt, mm -hmm. family members who are still going through the loss of an attempt, mm -hmm. and anybody else who may be considering suicide. This year, World Suicide Prevention Day is commemorated under the theme, Take a Minute, Change Your Life. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, I am Fennel Neptune. CAMDU specialists working on a language policy for the teaching of Quayle language in schools on the island 
are hoping to have the completed implementation plan and already formulated draft policy presented to the government of St. Lucia by January of 2022. Chris Satney tells us more in this report. The National Language Policy is a document which looks at the role of Creole in education, specifically at the primary and the secondary levels, ensuring that students at those levels are competent in reading, writing, and speaking the Creole language, much in the same way they do Standard English. The Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training recently held a National Language Policy Implementation Planning Conference through the Curriculum and Materials Development Unit, CAMDU. The online forum, which brought together professionals from across the Caribbean region, sought to get an idea of best practices and the considerations for putting an implementation plan together to ensure that Quayol gets the recognition it deserves. Curriculum Officer for English Language with Camdu, Angel Caglin, says the deliberations coming out of the recently held conference will help formulate that strategy, including a distinction made between a national language policy and an education language policy. Some other interesting points were the presentation of actual language instruction uh, methodology and approaches being used by our Martinican counterparts both at the primary and the secondary level. One of the major or the, the most outstanding aspects was the, the level of support available to teachers in terms of um, coaches and even inspectors ensuring that the language was being taught as it should. The language curriculum specialist says the plan is to have the completed strategy for implementation of the policy early in the new year, along with the already completed draft policy document. She says the overall aim is to improve student literacy development full circle, affording the Quayle language the same official status as the standard English dialect. Literacy development should always begin with students' first language, the native languages, their home languages, and understanding the, the influence that Quayle has had on students' development of other languages it is important that this language, not just for linguistic purposes, but also for cultural purposes, be preserved and that, that the literacy in this language be developed. Based on research, officials are expecting that students' literacy levels will improve since they will be able to transfer the skills developed in their home language to other languages that they will learn. It also means that we must have teacher professional development and teacher certification and training so that they can bring across or use the, the, the appropriate methodologies and present the language in a way that students will be able to understand all of their content area subjects. Further field, it means the development of resources. It means the development of content that can be used in the classroom. And of course, we can just imagine the impact that this is going to have outside of the classroom as well. Ms. Caglin says it is also expected that a lot of commercial opportunities will be created from the preparation of materials to be used for Quayle instruction within the classroom. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, I am Chris Satney reporting. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, met with the Executive Board of the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce industry and agriculture on Tuesday, 7 September 2021. The Prime Minister was accompanied by other government ministers, the Cabinet Secretary and the Chief Medical Officer. The Prime Minister thanked the Chamber and by extension the business community for remaining committed to serving the people of St. Lucia, especially during this global health and economic crisis. He reiterated his commitment to consultation with stakeholders as the government seeks to stabilize the economy and restructure the country's financial situation. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George provided an update on the country's health sector status as it relates to the management of COVID-19 and addressed concerns on protocols and other instituted measures to save lives and livelihoods. The government of St. Lucia has taken initial steps to improve the health care conditions in the south of the island. The Cabinet of Ministers on August 25 visited the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction site. Upon assessment of the structure, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip J. Pierce stated that the government of St. Lucia is seeking to remedy the ailments of the health sector with utmost urgency. 
The government of St. Lucia has taken initial steps to improve the healthcare conditions in the south of the island. The Cabinet of Ministers on Wednesday, 25th August 2021, held a site visit at the St. Jude's Hospital reconstruction site. Upon assessment of the structure, Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre says it is with urgency that the government is seeking to remedy the ailments of the health sector. Three options will be presented to a committee of professionals approved by the Cabinet to decipher the preeminent course of action. Honorable Pierre emphasized that the government's priority is bringing reprieve to citizens of the south of the island in the shortest possible time. A committee is first been approved by Cabinet to look into these three options. Option number one, whether we continue work on the new building. Option number two, whether we move into the east wing. And option number three, whether we improve the conditions for the time being at the stadium. Because the, the, the conditions at the stadium a cry to heaven for vengeance. People cannot be in these conditions. And the government's prime objective is to improve the situation for the patients, the staff, and the people who work at the stadium. Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, Honorable Moses Shabatis, will be working closely with the appointed committee to ensure swift redress of the situation. Our government is very serious about moving the patients, the staff, and to, to, from the stadium to ensure that they are in better conditions. We are very serious about it, and I'm going to be working very closely with the team which has been um, um, appointed by the cabinet, and we, we take this very seriously. So at the level of cabinet, we have um, appointed a group of professionals, and I will be working very closely with them. The prime minister has instructed that I I work with them very closely to ensure that we can, we can monitor what is happening and to ensure that we can deliver to the people of the South and St. Lucia what we promised. Honorable Moses Shabbat is echoing the sentiments of the Prime Minister says delivering quality health care to the people of the South remains the government's presidents. We have been in discussions with Dr. Francois, who is the, officer, the current officer in charge. We have been in discussions with, with the management staff at the St. Jude Hospital at the stadium. And we know that there are challenges. We know that the X-ray machine, for example, has gone down again. And our government is placing um, con conditions at the hospital, the, the equipment, the X-ray machine at St. Jude's and the other public facilities at the top of its priority list. And now we are working feverishly to ensure that these pieces of equipment um, get the attention and the service in which they require. So we want to tell you that we are ensuring that health care remains at the top of our priority list. The committee is expected to present recommendations to the government within a four-week period. From the Government Information Service, I'm Humedi Mark, reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of Weol. Suicidal thoughts, like other mental health challenges, can affect anyone. It can be you, your colleague, family member or neighbor everyone has a role to play in preventing suicide know the warning signs if you or someone you know is in crisis or emotional distress call the suicide hotline at 203 remember help is available this is a message from the employee assistance program department of the public service contact us at 468-2269 or 468 2260. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Monsieur le Général, Monsieur et Madame Département, qui est une responsabilité pour les formations à gouvernement cette fois-ci, la CGIS, à sa même télévision nationale, puis à NTN. Capuzato Nouvelle à Creole, Visato Primus Hutchinson. Ministre des Affaires Touristiques, Culture, Affaires et Créatives et Communication, Assez Honorable Dr. Ernest Hiller, et Ambassade de Pays Taiwan, M. Peter Chen. Et à part mes plusieurs officiers gouvernement et touristique qui étaient présents à Pigeon Island, vendredi bon matin, le 10e jour en mois de septembre 2021. Ça fait. Pour assister à une grande présentation culturelle 
at setli si Taiwan. Presentation te fait par un robot qui te montre divers spectacles culturels de Taiwan, except si côté tous les deux pays là te ka wey en même l'air, malgré la ni en grand différence à l'air et distance at setli si et Taiwan. Second de Parlement, le ministère des Affaires touristiques, on a Gibbon Ferdinand, expliqué pour une nouvelle accueil significative initiative ça. Et puis nous, les affaires carnaval, nous avons un morceau quadril, un petit morceau Paul Kaipi, la comète. Aussi, nous avons un morceau masquerade. Et puis, nous avons gardé ça et nous avons amusé comme nous. Mais, pendant ça, nous avons fait, nous avons vu que Jean Taiwan était là aussi. Alors, moi, quand ces affaires servent robot là et puis technologie, quand ils aident, fait plus possible pour nous ça mutuer diverses affaires qu'ils tissent ici. Qu'on sache, ça c'est nous c'est ministre tourisme et qu'il tisse et puis affaires industrie créative et puis information et puis là où servent la technologie, ils ont fait possible pour pour nous ça mutuer ça nous ni un pays. On a pu dire aussi parler de l'autre activité qui peut écouter un grand spectacle culturel ça là. Island. Nous avons aussi monté Fort Rodney pour montrer cette liste. Et puis, Jean Taiwan, euh, tout au long Rodney Bay et puis tout au long nord de cette liste. Et puis, le robot là, il fait ça possible parce qu'il a, il a montré un million, peut-être un dix, euh, euh, moins qu'un minute. Euh, où ça a été Taiwan et pour qu'il tout ça, cette liste, de euh, manière qu'il a gardé belle euh, à, à, à les monde là, là. Alors, moi, je crois que ça, c'était un bon, un bon barrage pour faire et puis ça a aidé pour. Uh, fait cette gens cette ici et puis Jean Taiwan uh, collaborer et puis uh, uh, aussi pour yo yo montrer ça yon a l'autre café en pays en affaire qu'il dit Premier ministre cette ici on a Philippe Jepier a dressé une conférence historique entre les pays CARICOM et pays Afrique ça a fait mardi passé par communication de internet côté premier ministre Pierre déclaré qui administration bienvenue grande occasion ça là pour la communication, coopération et coordination entre les pays d'Afrique et les nations caribes pour boucler l'expérience concernant la maladie de Corona et pour développer des mécanismes à faire diverses façons pour aider ou réduire la façon que ces pays là à continuer de dépendre de système de distribution de la vaccine. Le Premier ministre Pierre Diki a changé le grec pour que faire cela. Ça, c'est le président du pays Kenya, Yohuru. Kenyatta, c'est parler des situations qui ont ça changé, problème de justice, un bas système apartheid qui a existé à Sud-Afrique, qui qui mastipé autant à son nation nègre en pays sala. Père ministre Pierre remarque qui à Kaibla, yoni pour qu'à acheter 10 fois plus produits pharmacies, ça veut dire oui mais parce que c'est ça Kaibla qui a produit lui-même avec des gros services sala, parce que service la vaccine là en juin, c'est seulement à 23%. Premier ministre Ladio, qui a supporté l'initiative du directeur exécutif PAO, c'est le docteur Clarissa Etienne, Hot Pays Dominique, qui a annoncé récemment pour développer un set WEG pour augmenter la production et la fabrication de la vaccine en Ouja Kaibla. Premier ministre Pierre, by Asiwa Slaki, a bas management, le gouvernement s'est laissé, qui a une toute raison pour changer ses cruautés sous France Mauti avec des goûts maltraitement les Ayel, les Africains, pendant que vous bataille pour protéger et l'héritage. ministère des Affaires les étrangères, c'est le qui est aussi responsable pour affaires les citoyens pays qui ont resté dans les grands pays internationaux et faciliter une grande assistance financière pour les institutions, pour les enfants qui ont une occupation par an. Grand assistance à la défaite par les sept lycéens qui a resté en pays martinique. Ça, c'est Marjorie Duchel Zeffre, ma frère Pierre. Fait présentation à la à ce côté, madame Zeffre. Il dit que madame Zeffre, qui est cousine, a fait en ville souffrière. Et il y a un beau de trois temps qui a considéré en qui meilleure manière pour faire une contribution pour aider ces ici. Ça, c'est pays natal, nati. Sinon, Yeah, Madame Zethrin, consultée et puis Mademoiselle Joanna Salton, qui est représentative pour cette vie en Martinique, pour te déterminer en qui meilleure façon il s'est fait une contribution pour ces enfants qui ne brisent pas à cette vie. 
Après plusieurs discussions et considérations, ils ont décidé de choisir l'institution pour les enfants. C'est ce qui a porté nous à Holy Family Children's Home. Côté une présentation de 30 000 dollars qui est faite pour l'institution Salah, les enfants qui ont à Salah. Grand chef pour l'institution, ça c'est Sister Antonia David, qui est une dame catholique, déclaré qui grand, il déclare go gratitude pour l'institution Salah. Il dit, ça a assisté à d'ailleurs grand façon, à ma grande façon, c'est les enfants ça là, et qui a aidé l'institution à produire bon citoyen à cette ci Sister David, oui, monsieur, au fond chair, Madame Duchel Zeffrey, pour qu'a ouvert chair pour assister cette ci C'est Antonia fait comprendre ça c'est c'est tes enfants ça là qui ca demain ca ça occuper nous et c'est eux qui ca en bureau des ministres docteurs nos et l'autre professionnel qui ca fait exactement ça madame Duchel Duchel qui a fait présentement un dé yo aujourd'hui là madame ambassadeur des affaires citoyens c'est ici à l'autre pays docteur Joyce Lynn Fletcher fait au cours et puis important service li pour développement national il dit aussi c'est le troisième citoyen dans l'autre pays qui a fait une contribution comme ça. Madame Duchel, tu te plaît pour la contribution qu'il fait pour aider les enfants en cette ci expressement les petits-enfants en Holy Family Children's Home. Il a ajouté qui a touché autant ces petits-enfants là, il était satisfait qu'il ait choisi l'institution là. Et des présentations, la présentation a été faite en chambre des conférences du ministère des Affaires et des Étrangères. En présence du ministre des Affaires et des Étrangères, on a Alva Baptiste, qui est les officiers, avec la famille Mme Marjorie Duchel. C'est ce que ça nous a fait pour nous faire là. Je vous remercie autant pour nous regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour nous dire encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez une autre nouvelle à Coyol. Avant d'aller, je vous remercie pour nous donner pour nous donner des précautions contre la maladie de la corona. Je vous remercie pour nous donner des précautions pour nous donner des précautions. Les pieds de distance pas comblés, uh, pas à um, aller du vide uh, côté qui n'y a plus le monde pour protéger, parce que la situation qui a venu à accomplir, en plus, oui. alors, il y a tout le monde qui est nécessaire. Ça, c'est là. Je vous souhaite un bon fin de semaine et que vous ayez pris le temps. Merci à Pearl Primus. We now take a look at the weather. Sunrise Saturday, 5.52 a.m. Winds will be blowing from between east and east-northeast near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. The weather fair to partly cloudy and hazy skies with a few showers. Seas are slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. A relatively dry and stable lower atmosphere will limit any shower activity across the Lesser Antilles during the forecast period. Saharan dust will cause a reduction in air quality and visibility across the Eastern Caribbean region during the next couple of days. A tropical wave located over the Western Tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to begin affecting the islands from Saturday night. A tropical wave located over the Central Tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour. A third tropical wave, just coming off the West African coast, is forecast to be conducive for further development from early next week as it moves west-northwestward. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.